Welcome, Dr. Rigby. Thank you so much for joining us today. I understand you're one of the first in the School of Medicine to implement just-in-time teaching in your class. Can you tell me what just-in-time teaching is? Well, it's just-in-time teaching because uh, it involves a lot of prep work uh, the night before, so hence the just-in-time portion of it. So the first thing a faculty member needs to do is to decide what source material they want the students to reference the night before. So it can be a book chapter, it can be a website, um, it can be a, a syllabus or a handout, so some concrete information the student needs to look at up to the night before. Then you need to decide two content questions that you want to ask of the material. And then the third question you will ask of the, of the students is what did you find uh, confusing about the material that you would like me to explain further. Then you need to set a time by which the students need to turn in their answers. Students being students, I recommend setting that time an hour before you actually want the deadline to be. And then you need to set aside time the night before to sift through all of the answers and to, to use that to help tailor your teaching technique for the next day. Wonderful. Now, can you tell me how just-in-time teaching was effective in your large group course on women's health? Well, it's interesting because I first became attracted to just-in-time teaching as a small group teaching technique. Uh, but when I took the instructional strategies course, uh, in the time curriculum, I became exposed to it as a large group te teaching technique. And as you mentioned, um, I teach several courses in the women's health curriculum where I have up to 200 students. And my challenges moving forward in the new curriculum was how to personalize and make the learning more active in a setting where I could not have uh, small groups in each of my lecture settings due to the constraints of my faculty size. And so I came up uh, with just-in-time teaching as a way to take teaching in a large group setting and yet personalize it to the learner uh, so that they would, would, it would become more active learning and more interaction between the teacher and the learner. And what types of content questions did you use? Well, it was interesting. One of the questions I used were how are amino acids transported across the placenta? And what I found fascinating was that you could answer that simply in one or two sentences, or I had students who actually were giving me diagrams of the placenta villi and the placenta, and so obviously they had put a lot of time into it. And, but it was a question that I could go down fairly quickly and say yes, they understood it, no, they didn't. It was very interesting because um, the last question, what did you find puzzling or confusing? Remember, one of the lectures I did had been given previously in the fall, and I was frankly astounded by some of the questions they asked about content they had been taught in the fall, and I ended up having to actually adjust my lecture the next day. I had taken out content that I needed to put back in. So I found that to be the most helpful of the three questions, actually. And what challenges did you experience? The key challenge was the type of format that the questions are answered in. Um, I quickly discovered that you do not want the students to send the answers in email. That is quite, quite cumbersome. So fortunately, by the time we had our second session up and running, we had a red cap survey, which tabulated the answers very nicely. And so that is very, very key to get the answers submitted to you in a format that you can quickly go down and scan what the answers are. So I found that was my key learning curve. The other key learning curve was to understand that uh, the, the answer to the third question question may alter parts of the lecture that you thought you had set. So to be, be flexible in terms of adding or taking out material uh, the next day. Now, how did the students react to just-in-time teaching? Remarkably well. Uh, they understood that they were guinea pigs. This was the first time I was introducing it to the class. And I think it was because they understood that, uh, that I was on a learning curve, but I was putting effort in to responding to the, and, make, and tailoring the lecture the next day to the work that they had put in the night before. So I was very um, uh, happily surprised as to how well they uh, took the launching of this new technique. What advice do you have for faculty who are interested in just-in-time teaching? Well, I think that uh, there's a number of websites and videos uh, that we would be happy to provide the, uh, the links to, uh, which I think give you uh, excellent examples of just-in-time teaching in action. 
I think that med school is also going to be very good about letting people know when just-in-time teaching lectures will be occurring. So I think seeing that at the medical center itself would be very helpful. And I believe that we're also having a small lunch workshop and finally uh, to learn more in depth about any of the teaching strategies, uh, the instructional strategies in the faculty time program uh, that the coursework I found very helpful for just-in-time teaching and a number of other different strategies. Mm -hmm.